Thank you for uh, joining us today. My name is Marcela Vieira. I'm a senior researcher at the Global Health Center at the Geneva Graduate Institute. Today I'm going to be presenting the findings of a research report, Rising Pharmaceutical Innovation in the Global South, Painting with New Colors. You are going also to hear from my colleague uh, Ichi Liu, who is going to be presenting some of the findings of the research as well. I also take the opportunity to introduce uh, the co-authors of the report, Aziza Sijiki, Adrian Alonso Ruiz, Caitlin Large, and Suri. So this report is part of a broader research collaboration that was supported by the Open Society University Research Network, which is called Research Collaboration on Technology, Equity, and the Right to Health. Uh, this research collaboration was uh, conducted uh, in partnership uh, with uh, us here at the Global Health Center uh, at the Geneva Graduate Institute, Black, Black University in Bangladesh, and Universidad de Los Andes uh, in Colombia. Uh, the research reports uh, for uh, this collaboration uh, are available at the Knowledge Portal on Innovation and Access to Medicines. You can see the link uh, on your screen, uh, and we invite you to uh, download uh, the full research reports, not only our reports, but also the reports from our colleagues in Bangladesh and Colombia, uh, in which they investigate with more detail the pharmaceutical R&D ecosystem in each, uh, in each of the countries. Uh, it's important to mention that this research is part of a broader project that's happening uh, here at the Global Health Center, uh, which is called New Business Model for Governing Innovation and Access to Medicines. You can also refer to the link on the screen uh, to find more information about the project. Uh, that project uh, has uh, basically uh, the objectives of deepening the understanding of the political, economic, scientific, and organizational factors that are required to implement new models of medicines R&D that will deliver both innovation and globally accessible medicines. So the New Business Model Project has been going on for the past uh, almost five years now. And as part of that project, we have conducted a number of literature reviews and also a mapping of initiatives that might represent alternative business models of innovation. You can refer to the portal, uh, to the knowledge portal as well for more information uh, about that. Uh, and what we have found is that most of the available information uh, refers to only a few countries, uh, namely the United States and a few Western European countries. There has been uh, very scarce information on existing activities, capacities and outcomes of pharmaceutical innovation happening in low and middle income countries. So that's uh, basically what motivated us to have this dedicated part of the project to investigate with more in-depth activities happening in the OMIC. It's important to say that uh, there is no definition of Global South uh, and the name of the report, you can see that uh, it's rising pharmaceutical innovation in the Global South. So we use the LMICs as a proxy for Global South, but we did not adopt any geographical restrictions. So we included all low and middle income countries as a scope for research using the World Bank classification as of June 2022. So that report has two main objectives. First is to provide a baseline pictures of pharmaceutical innovation in our MICs. And second is to identify possible alternative RNG models being implemented in our MICs. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we adopted a fourfold uh, methodology. First, we conducted a literature review with a specific focus in low and middle income countries. We mainly included studies uh, that were uh, conducted in English uh, language uh, and uh, mostly academic journals, but we also included some, uh, uh, some great literature to complement those findings. To complement the literature review, we conducted a series of semi-structured scoping interviews with experts in pharmaceutical uh, innovation, mostly uh, from uh, the Global South. We interviewed uh, eight people uh, for, for the scoping interviews uh, that are going to be uh, summarized uh, very shortly. Uh, thirdly, we conducted a database analysis uh, that you are going to hear with more details uh, from uh, my colleague Ichi uh, shortly. 
RN40, uh, we conducted a mapping of innovative proposals of RNG that was submitted to an open call led by the World Health Organization in 2013. So first, I'm going to be presenting uh, the findings uh, together from the literature review and the scoping interviews, which we have uh, organized into different teams. From our research, we could find that there is growing activity in pharmaceutical innovation in developing countries, but mostly the literature referred to only a few, uh, a few countries, particularly China, India, Brazil, South Africa, and Cuba. Uh, during the scoping interviews, the interviewees identified a number of other countries that were also uh, having important pharmaceutical innovation uh, taking place. And I invite you to refer to the full research report for more information about that. So the findings also show that there has been different innovative pathways uh, that have been followed by uh, developing countries to develop their uh, pharmaceutical R&D capacities. Uh, the main uh, referred to uh, pathway is the one that's called imitation to innovation, which basically countries started developing generic medicines, uh, copying uh, information from medicines that are already exist and have been developed uh, most of the time uh, abroad. Then after they start with an uh, incremental innovation uh, around those products to change uh, some of uh, its aspects uh, sometimes the formulation, sometimes to make it uh, uh, better uh, to use uh, in local contexts. And then after they started uh, developing more innovative uh, R&D activities. Uh, so we found that uh, most of the funding uh, and the cumulative capacity for conducting R&D in developing countries actually come from the, produ the production and sale of generic drugs and also from providing uh, research services uh, to other organizations. But especially in the interview and also some of the studies highlight that uh, currently there is reduced policy space to uh, adopt that pathway uh, due to international agreements that restrict access to information, knowledge and technology. So another topic that came uh, frequently uh, during our research is uh, the government role and uh, sources for R&D funding. So it was noted that in most of the countries, uh, there is very limited private capital to conduct uh, pharmaceutical R&D, which has led to significant governing, uh, government funding and support for this type of activities in developing countries. India has been uh, noted as an uh, exception uh, in which the private sector is actually um, leading uh, R&D uh, for, for the pharmaceutical sector. Another topic that came up frequently was some of the RNG policies that have been adopted by different countries. Uh, here we highlight uh, three of those policies, uh, specifically policies linking RNG capacity, techno technological and industrial development, and public health needs. And countries such as Thailand and Brazil has been uh, mentioned for adopting uh, those type of policies. Countries like Russia and China have been mentioned for adopting uh, policies of mandatory local manufacturing uh, policies uh, in the countries, which has led to cumulative capacity for innovative activities. A number of other countries have adopted uh, policies of uh, mandatory clinical trials to be conducted domestically in order to obtain regulatory approval in the country. And that has also led to the development of running clinical trials. It has also been raised, especially by the interviewees, that uh, there is low political, political priority uh, for uh, having targeted RNG policies for pharmaceuticals, uh, especially beyond upper middle income countries. The literature and the interviewees also identified a number of actors that are involved in pharmaceutical r and uh, in, in developing countries. Uh, it was especially highlighted the role of academic institutions and small and middle enterprises. But it was also mentioned that there is an important gap in translational research, as most developing countries lack the infrastructure 
uh, for intermediaries that can take the basic research that was developed uh, in academia uh, to a further product development that can actually make uh, it reach uh, patients. Another thing that was uh, frequently raised was the role of international collaboration, as lots of research activity in developing countries happen with uh, institutions from abroad. Uh, in terms of R&D priorities, it was uh, identified that uh, most of the R&D taking place in LMICs, they tend to address local needs and also to improve ease of use in local contexts. But it was also raised uh, the risk that the private sector uh, might not address diseases that mostly affect poor segment markets. And there is a need to have a public uh, policy uh, to address uh, those uh, particular needs. Uh, finally, a number of challenges and barriers were also identified, uh, such as the lack of financial and human resources. Uh, the lack of research uh, infrastructure, especially regarding to some specific uh, type of laboratories that are necessary to, uh, to conduct uh, clinical trials. Uh, the lack of targeted policies for RMG in the pharmaceutical sector. Uh, some regulatory issues around uh, clinical trials and also uh, the approval uh, of, of medicines and limited pharmacovigilance uh, capacity. Finally, we were uh, able to uh, put together uh, from the literature and from the scoping interviews a uh, list with uh, examples of pharmaceutical products that were developed in LMICs. Uh, we identified 23 uh, products from seven LMICs, namely Brazil, China, Cuba, Egypt and Malaysia, India and Russia. Uh, those products, they include uh, drugs, biologics and vaccines, plant-based medicines, diagnostics platform, monoclonal antibodies, and also uh, gene therapies. And they were uh, development for the, treaty, for the treatment of several diseases, in, including uh, neglected tropical diseases, infectious diseases, HIV, tuberculosis, meningitis, viral hepatitis, diabetes, antibiotics, and cancer. You can refer uh, to table one uh, in your uh, research uh, report for the full list uh, of products with the name of the uh, organizations involved, uh, which include private companies, public and private universities, public research centers, and state-owned institutions, as well as in collaboration with global initiatives uh, such as the product development partnerships that are uh, mostly based uh, here in Geneva. Now we are going to hear from my colleague uh, Ichi Liu, who is going to present the findings from our database analysis.